Today's video is sponsored by Factor Meals. What are Factor Meals? Well, they are a healthy, fresh, never frozen meal that is delivered to your doorstep. Now, what is unique about this is that they can be cooked, ready, within two minutes or less, which allows me more time to do the things that I need to do instead of worrying about what's ready for dinner and the cooking and the prep and running to the grocery store. It's delivered to me. I can get it plated within two minutes or less. Fresh, never frozen. Did I mention that? Listen, if you're looking for a calorie conscious option this summer, I'm telling you, try delicious, dietitian approved, calorie smart meals with a round or less than 550 calories per serving. Now, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code UNSOLVEDNM50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Let me repeat that. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code UNSOLVEDNM50 to get 50% off your first factor box. You won't regret it. <sighs> My frustration level is very high right now. So why you ask? Okay, I just got done watching for the past two days, a documentary called It Was Him. The Serial Murders of Eddie Edwards. Okay, where to start on this? I'll have to admit that when this show came out, it's a six episode show, docu-series, following a detective, former detective named John Cameron, and Eddie Edwards, who is a serial killer, his grandfather, his, he was the grandfather of this guy that was working in tandem with John Cameron. When this came out, I watched it. I started to watch it. I was intrigued. And I got probably four minutes into it and I stopped watching it. Now it's been many years. I forced myself to sit down and actually watch it. Now, why did I do this? Okay. Quick synopsis. John Cameron is a former detective, police officer of, I believe, 24 years. And I believe he wrote a book about the serial killer named Eddie Edwards. He had done some correspondence with him um, while he was in prison and wrote a book. Now, why did I give up after three minutes a couple years ago when I started watching it? I'll tell you why. Tell me if you recognize any of these names. Martha Moxley. Chandra Levy. 
West Memphis 3. When the anthrax scare, when somebody was mailing all those anthrax letters. John Bonet, Black Dahlia, Adam Walsh, Zodiac, Lacey Peterson, Jimmy Hoffa, Teresa Hollenbach from the Steve Avery making a murderer, Sam Shepard, Atlanta Child Murders. Now, they ring a bell to you, right? Sure. Well, John Cameron said that Eddie Edwards committed all of those murders. That is why I turned it off within three minutes of watching it. However, I did not want to be that dismissive last night when I said, you know what? There was a reason this intrigued me because, you know what? I wrote a book, a fiction book, many years ago. It's actually a screenplay about almost that very thing. How one individual was responsible for a lot of famous murders. This was fiction. Okay? Very ironic, right? But I wanted to give this guy the benefit of the doubt, which I did. I paid $13 on Amazon Prime to watch this series. Now, with that said, did he change my mind? Do I believe that Eddie Edwards was responsible for all those famous murders? I didn't mention all the non-famous murders that I wasn't even familiar with. No. Uh, how do I want to do this? Let me, let me, listen, I never want to, uh, I don't want to ever want to make somebody feel bad. Okay. I never want to criticize people because I know what that's like to be criticized. But man, let me tell you, I hope I did not come off like I just watched this guy come off on that show. On The Hunt for the Zodiac, I hope I didn't come off looking crazy like this guy did during that show. They... You know what that show just taught me? You see, everything's a learnable moment, right? That show taught me that I will never do another television show unless it is either my own show or it's my own show and I can I can steer it the way I want it to go. Because that shit I just watched, while produced well, must cater to crazy people in life that follow true crime. I'm, I'm almost... I guess speechless to think that somebody actually not only comes up with this but believes it and convinces others to believe it. Now I shouldn't be surprised. You know, Charles Manson convinced people to do things. David Koresh, Jim Jones, you know, the list goes on and on. Oh, but, okay, so this, this ex-detective was, from what they said, and I, did, I couldn't find too much on this, but he also worked cold cases on the job and was an FBI task force member. Well, as you can see right here, I was an FBI task force member. So that is why I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. Let me see what you got to link these. 
if there's evidence there, I will follow. So I start off very skeptical. Then I get into the show. There's just so much to talk about. But I took a lot of notes during this program. And I I think I, what I want to say is that the program, the producers, m the network must have had two goals in mind. One is this is so unbelievable that it is going to draw viewers in. And I imagine the ratings were probably pretty good. Number two, that they felt that this detective really believed what he was saying. But I'm going to go back to number one. They thought it would make good television. Because it did. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to read through my notes on this. That's the simplest way I think that I can do it. I wrote stuff down. And then I'll discuss it a little bit. And we can go from there. Alright. Before I do that. Let me turn on some lights. So I'm going to pause this. So I can get some more lights on here because I want to see what I'm reading and I can see that it's kind of dark. So, Okay, thanks. I'm back. Uh, let's start off with uh, how the show starts. Okay, episode one, you're kind of introduced to Eddie Edwards who basically is a con man um, and his grandson who goes on this uh, journey with Cameron. And they're going to find out, you know, how many people Eddie Edwards really did kill. Edwards confessed to five murders in the 2000 time frames that he committed in 1977. It was a couple at a Lover's Lane area, 1980 and 1996. One of those kids that he killed was his own step or foster child that he had killed for insurance money. So he confessed to those five. None of them famous. But the whole premise of this John Cameron's idea that... He, this is just so frustrating to talk about. <laughs> because it, it just goes into circles. The whole premise of Edwards killing people and framing people was to be recognized. But yet he confessed to five murders... That no one knows about. You know what I mean? But yet Cameron will link him to Zodiac. He's the Zodiac killer. Without a doubt. That's what he says. You know. West Memphis 3. Oh my. Man I never want to shit on anybody's parade. I mean you're entitled to your opinions. And if he really believes that. That's fine. But man. So, okay. Episode one. Um, he mostly, Cameron gets involved because there's an unsolved murder of a couple in a Lovell's, Lover's Lane in Great Falls, Man Montana, where he's from. It's the Kilke and Boggle murders. And... That's what got him started. They talk about 1980 murders of a couple. And that's what ended up being his demise. His Eddie Edwards' daughter, decades later, turns him in for these murders. That happened, I believe, in 1980. So, with the whole, during the whole show... It is evident that nobody likes this detective. Nobody will meet with him. Victims, family members, who he's supposedly working for, not that they paid him or anything, but um, 
when when you work a homicide, you're kind of working it for the victims and the victims' families. At least I do. They didn't want to meet with him. There was a cop whose sister was murdered that they interviewed. He wasn't a cop during that time when his sister was murdered, but because of that, he ended up becoming a cop. He wanted nothing to do with this Cameron. Cameron himself said that he was shunned by his own police department and actually he said he was fired. Now, I related to him in a way. Not I never got fired from my police department. I felt at some times people shunned me because I, I didn't conform. You know, I wasn't part of a clique. That's how I felt shunned. So when he said that, I kind of related to him, but I don't know how he was shunned. Um, I don't feel anybody thought I was crazy. Now, maybe they felt that way with him. I don't know. But he said that his own police department hates him. Now, very on in this series, he wants to relate that Eddie Edwards is a Zodiac murderer. How he relates that is because when Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard were murdered by the Zodiac, he had on his executioner's hood, everybody has seen that picture of the Zodiac, and he had a knife in a leather sheath. During conversation with Brian Hartnell, and I said this on the Zodiac, and they show that I was on they might not have aired it but I certainly made a point of it because I thought it was important but during conversation with Brian Hartnell the Zodiac said that he had escaped from Deer Lake or Deer Lodge prison in Montana and Eddie Edwards had done time there and had been released recently while there just like many other prisoners Eddie Edwards learned the skill of uh, making stuff with leather. Now Cameron makes the jump that the executioner hood was not made of leather but had great stitching and had a leather sheath. Well hell, 99% of knife sheaths are leather. That's a big jump. Now the Deer Lodge thing, that intrigues me. Okay? Right? Big jump. I have written down here that he had took his family to the crime scene. Not the Zodiac crime scene, but the crime scene of one of the ones that he confessed to, I believe, in 1980. And he seemed to have a habit of maybe doing that. So I, I annotated that because that means something. Okay, he's going back there for whatever reason. But in this show, they keep going back to saying how Zodiac's murders were at lovers' lanes. Okay, except for Paul Stein. And because he had confessed to killing two sets of couples at lovers' lanes that that's a link also to Zodiac. Murder mimicry is what he called it. He kept saying it. Let me tell you something. There are thousands of murders that occurred at Lover's Lanes where people were shot. Son of Sam comes to mind. Okay? So is Eddie Edwards responsible for the Son of Sam murders? Might as well throw the Son of Sam on there as well, right? Just because people were shot at Lover's Lanes does not connect it to Zodiac. <sighs> he says the Zodiac composite sketch matches. That Zodiac composite sketch match 75% of America in the 50s and 60s because of those glasses, 
I'm here to tell you. It doesn't match him at all. Okay, but they wanted to say that. Now listen, I understand how television does things. At one point in the Zodiac show, the producer showed me a picture of... I want to say it was... Lawrence Kane at an IHOP and or at least that's what I thought that's what they told me okay this is Lawrence at an IHOP I need you to we're going to throw some pictures on your laptop you flip through them like you're looking for something and that picture is going to come up you stop there and say holy shit that's Lawrence Kane at an IHOP I come to find out later somebody had sent me a rude message you know, if they had done it the right way, I would have responded and, you know, but anyhow, saying that's not Lawrence Kane. As a matter of fact, it's so-and-so. I can't believe that you tried to pawn off to America that, that that's Lawrence Kane. Well, I wasn't. I was, you know, going by what the producers told me. Um, so I understand television. But I also know through television that I never said anything that I did not want to say or did not believe in, such as the Paul Stein murders when they wanted me to take credit, wanted me and Sal to take credit for some computations that somebody else had done online that the producers found. And they wanted us to act like we figured it out. And I wouldn't do that. I said, absolutely not. Um, so I understand how television works. And hopefully, they're not making him say a lot of these things. I could tell some was scripted. When he was sitting there with a the black background and the lights in front of him, I could tell that they gave him lines to say. Because they did the same thing to me. Uh... You know, he made a, a big deal about these ciphers that the Zodiac were saying, how Eddie Edwards had an IQ of 132, um, and he was intelligent, and he would taunt the police. And if you look at the one postcard that was sent to Paul Avery, he's telling you that it's Eddie Edwards. And the reason he's telling you that is because the number, his birth date is in the card by, by holding up, the skeleton is holding up a three. So it's showing his birth date as 6 14 33 because there's two threes because he's holding his fingers like this on the skeleton card. So that actually means 33. Get the fuck out of here. Okay? I'm just being honest. That can mean anything. People that get obsessed with cases will make anything fit. And that's exactly what he's doing. Hey, go ahead and do it. Go ahead. It's your opinion and you're entitled to it. But I'm calling bullshit on it. Okay? Absolutely. I've seen people make the Zodiac ciphers into anything they wanted to say. I can put Kenny Maines into the Zodiac cipher and I could convince somebody that it works. So it must be me. I must be the Zodiac, even though I wasn't born until 1974. Okay? It's bullshit. <sighs> I'm going to move on to episode three where, you know, I'm not even going to talk a little bit about some of the lover's lane murders that he thinks that Eddie Edwards did that others were convicted on but this episode three he says that Eddie Edwards did the Atlanta child murders just totally totally speechless Okay, so I'm trying to look at it with opened eyes. And I say, show me the evidence. 
If there's evidence, then okay, I'll, I'll jump on board. There was an anonymous letter sent to the newspaper or the police in 1981 which resembled Zodiac. Eddie Edwards had a van. Some theorize this person, the Atlanta child murders, had a van. Eddie Edwards was racist. Had to be a racist guy to kill all these black kids. And Eddie Edwards lived in Atlanta. That's your tie? That's what that's why there's there is hundreds of thousand people living in Atlanta. A lot of them are racist. A lot of them drive a van. Now you say that he had a cop's uniform in a house that he burnt down for insurance money back in Pennsylvania. And he used this uniform to draw these kids into his van to kill him. I, all I can say is this is for TV. Why they're in Atlanta on this TV show, they're in Mer or yeah, they're in Atlanta. Somehow they make a connection to Marietta, Georgia and say, well, you know, John Bonet's buried here. Now there's a link to John Bonet. John Bonet was seeing Santa. Okay, remember all this stuff in my other video about John Bonet? Man, this is just difficult to talk about. And I have written down here, I find myself getting angry. Just because it's so far-fetched. He's saying now that Eddie Edwards, dressed up as Santa, knocked on the door at John Bonet's house and was let in by John Bonet, and he killed her. Oh. And there was a flashlight connection. Okay, this is the most ridiculous thing. So when Eddie Edwards was locked up in a prison, he supposedly made his wife get a trailer right outside of that prison. This is in the 60s, maybe early 50s. And he would communicate with her because he could see her doorway. He would flash a flashlight in his cell. Why they were allowed to have flashlights in their cell, I don't know. And she would hit the porch light and they would communicate back and forth. According to Cameron, there was a flashlight left at John Bonet's that's unaccounted for, or you know what I mean. If you see my video, you know the John Bonet flashlight that more than likely was used to hit her over the head. He's saying that that was Eddie Edwards' flashlight and he was outside signaling the same way to John Bonet. Man, boy, am I getting frustrated. There's no evidence of that. What are you talking about? <sighs> Go on to episode four. Just when you think it can't get any more ridiculous. It can't, right? Oh, it does. Now Eddie Edwards has done time in Lewisburg State Penitentiary which is right down the road from me. I'm very familiar with it. I've been in there lots of time, interviewed criminals in there. And his cellmate was Jimmy Hoffa. Now this is according to Eddie Edwards' own autobiography that he had wrote. Now let's know that Eddie Edwards is a known con man. He's a known liar. I would want to see evidence that he was his cellmate. He might have been there at the same time. Maybe. But according to Edwards, they were friends. Jimmy Hoffa was friends with Eddie Edwards. Now you know where this is going. Right. Are you rolling your eyes yet? Do me, do me a favor. 
if you are believing so far that Eddie Edwards is the Zodiac Killer, the Atlanta Child Killer, John Benet Ramsey, murderer, just go ahead and click off, okay? Because, may, I don't know, maybe I just don't want crazies on my channel, okay? Eddie Edwards meets Jimmy Hoffa at a restaurant and kills him. They made this into a TV show, folks. Can you believe this? What was the motive? According to Cameron, Jimmy Hoffa, when Eddie Edwards got paroled, he went and thanked Jimmy Hoffa because he somehow thought Jimmy Hoffa helped him get his parole. He kissed, said, said to him, I would kiss you on your forehead right now if I could or something. That's how happy I am. And Jimmy Hoffa said, called him, I don't want to be a homo or something like that. And that was enough for Eddie Edwards to hold that resentment till he got out of prison for many years to meet Jimmy Hoffa at a restaurant to murder him. Man, there are some crazy people out there. I don't want to say Cameron's crazy, okay? I, I don't know the guy. I kind of feel sorry for him if this is what he believes, if he truly believes this stuff. All right, back to my notes. Because uh, of a quote about a steak dinner in the book, Cameron believes he was meeting Hoffa at the restaurant. So I wrote, just because someone has a connection doesn't mean, or mean they murdered somebody. Goes from there to this Robinson family murders. I've never heard of this. It was a, a family of, what, four or five people that were murdered in Michigan that's never been solved. One of them was, I believe, a 13-year-old boy who tried to open up a plane door or something while Eddie Edwards was on this plane and the pilot had to come back and or the stewardess and put that boy in another seat and Cameron held resentment to this and to this boy and then slaughtered his whole family years later In 2003, this making of a murderer in Stephen Avery thing. I've never watched it. I'm going to. But Stephen Avery is alleged to have killed Teresa Hollabach. Her remains were found burned outside of Stephen Avery's house. Now, according to Cameron... The Zodiac wrote a letter about how he would create a bomb. Now, one of our stupid episodes on Hunt for the Zodiac was looking for this bomb. I was up in a helicopter. That was the only cool thing about that episode. The rest of it was pretty far-fetched and bullshit. Um, but it wasn't a lie. Zodiac did say that he was planning a bomb. And he put it in the ground. So we went and looked for it. But Cameron says... That he killed Teresa Hollenbach. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. Placed her body over top of this homemade bomb. As Zodiac described decades earlier. Blew up Teresa's body. Then went and picked up all the body parts. And planted them to frame Stephen Avery. Oh my God, are you for real?
I don't know how many times I'm going to be speechless. I really don't. Listen, I didn't watch Making of a Murderer. I don't know whether Stephen Avery is guilty or not guilty. I don't know whether the police framed him or didn't frame him. I don't know any of that. But I tell you what did not happen. Okay? Eddie Edwards did not do a homemade bomb in the ground, blow up her body into little bitty pieces, and then he went and picked up those little bitty pieces to go and frame somebody whom he didn't know. The reason that he planted these body parts that he blew up and was able to find to frame Stephen Avery was in retaliation of the Zodiac, which he was, right? He was the Zodiac. Had the same last name as Paul Avery, the reporter that the Zodiac taunted. So, because Paul Avery and Stephen Avery have the same last name, the Zodiac, a.k.a. Eddie Edwards, planted these body parts there to frame them. Okay. I have written down here... <clears throat> The reason that Eddie Edwards is tied to the Stephen Avery case is because he lived in Wisconsin and he wanted to make the cops look stupid, like they were planning evidence when they really weren't. He supports this theory by showing a picture of someone that resembles Eddie Edwards during the trial footage during the Stephen Avery trial. Does it resemble? Yeah, it could. But it could resemble one million other people. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a classic example of making evidence fit your theory. Oh, matter of fact, I got a star written down right here. He said, Cameron, follow the evidence. Don't make it fit. Then I wrote underneath it, are you kidding me? That is exactly what you're doing. That's exactly what he's doing. And even Ken, is it Ken Krantz, the prosecutor, said to Cameron during this documentary, you can't have it both ways. You're trying to make it fit. And that's exactly what he's doing. Another page of notes, okay? He states that Eddie Edwards was raised in his formative years in this orphanage. So they revisited the orphanage. And when they went there, it's a Catholic school. But guess what? Well, there's a cross on that Catholic school. But according to Cameron... It's the Zodiac sign. And it's another tie-in to Camp to Edwards being the Zodiac. You can't make this stuff up, folks. You can't. Only in Hollyweird. I'm telling you. He says in his books how he was raised, Edwards was raised in a and he was beat a lot by these nuns. And he said, I hated Sister Agnes with all my heart. Then why not kill her? Okay. <laughs> Just when you think it can't get any more crazy. Let me throw this one at you. Ready? Throw a big softball size at you. Serving it up for you to hit a home run here. Ready? Lacey Peterson. Okay. Okay. He states that Eddie Edwards killed Lacey Peterson in order to frame Scott Peterson. Now, why? Well, what's his motive? 
Well, they kind of dance around this, okay? But essentially, Scott Peterson was a cheater, and he was Eddie Edwards is going to punish him for that. Although that doesn't quite make sense because Lacey, it wasn't found out that Scott cheated on Lacey with Amber Fry until after Lacey was murdered. So that doesn't make any sense. Because Lacey Peterson's body was found in the Bay in San Francisco, he correlates that to the Zodiac. You know how many bodies have been found in San Francisco? Are all of them related to Zodiac? He says, he states that Lacey and the baby, the unborn baby that also washed up with her, was planted on the shore by Eddie Edwards. And he supports this fact by saying the decomposition of both bodies were not consistent with being in the water. And I adamantly disagree. The decomp of the baby was not as severe as Lacey's. Now Lacey was found basically a torso. How many? How, how much more decomp do you want, buddy? You know what I mean. The unborn baby, it was not decomp that much. You know why? Because it was protected from the elements, because it was inside Lacey's stomach, and it expanded. After many weeks of being underwater, it finally gave loose, and when they they broke free from the concrete shackles that they had on and risen to the top of the water and floated to the bank. It's not because they weren't in the water. He also said that Lacey's Peterson's body was mutilated. That's not true. How can you say that? It was decomped from being in the water. It wasn't mutilated. You're twisting the facts to try to make it fit your narrative. And that's wrong. That is why I think that he is saying that he's a hated man. And none of, none of these family members want him. I've never had that. If you're, hel if you're truly helping the, the victims, the victims' families, they want, they, they embrace you. I've only had... Maybe two or three families disagree with me because I didn't see the case the way they saw it. And maybe only one of them didn't like me. But to despise me and not want to meet and talk with me, like these guys, these victims' family has done with him, Maybe that's why, because you're twisting the evidence to fit your narrative, and that's wrong. I've written down here, after I put the decomp of Connor in being untrue, I was getting angry again. I was, I'm just get, I was getting so frustrated. And I have a quote here. He killed Lacey also because Lacey was a brunette just like his wife and mother. Really? How about the other 100,000 brunettes that were killed? Were they all Ed Edwards because they reminded him of his mother? You can't... I, you can't tie him to the area. You can't tie him to the murder. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Then he goes on about Kathleen Johns. I know all about Kathleen Johns. Looked at the reports for the Zodiac show on the History Channel. Um, he believes that she, he was involved in that. I'm not even going to go there. He says he was, Eddie Edwards was targeting a woman and a baby. Kathleen Johns, who was uh, had a baby 
a newborn, and I believe she was pregnant at the time when this happened. He said he was doing it just like Lacey, and that they were, Eddie Edwards was steering the evidence to make it look like it was a cult murder. My retort to that would be, why not make it evident? Why not take Connor's little body and scribble with a knife 666 on his body? Put a rope around his neck that has devil worshiper on it. Instead, there's like a piece of debris that's entangled in the baby's neck that has nothing to do with the occult, but you want to say that it does. Again, trying to make the evidence fit your narrative. There's a, some big talk about this God letter that was sent to the Modesto B being similar to the Zodiac letter because it was written in block letters and had a couple of spelling similarities to the Zodiac, like double consonants, like busy spelled with two S's, and Zodiac did that. Uh, I would put a little bit more credibility into that. You see how I'm doing things here? I don't dismiss completely because of one, two, or in this case, 14 crazy theories. If there's something that fits, I will say, okay, let's look at that. So some similarities. Sure, I'll, I'll give him that. Um, he says that in 2002 there was a Zodiac conference in Modesto, California, I want to say, and that there he, they, they showed a picture from the side and back of a guy that could have been Eddie Edwards, and that places him near Lacey Peterson. Again, just utter nonsense. Just utter nonsense. Ed's upbringing and mom. So in episode, episode five, they discuss Eddie Edwards' upbringing. And I have annotated here, it's the only thing I agree with. Okay? That he had a rough upbringing and it affected him in his criminal life and who he became. I buy that. Now, I don't know what's more preposterous. Okay, we went from Atlanta child killing, Jimmy Hoffa, Lacey Peterson, John Bonet, to this one. The Black Dahlia killing. I don't know which one's more crazy. I'm going to slump them all up together there with craziness. So... January 9th, 1947, it was between January 9th and January 15th, I think, uh, Elizabeth Short, the Black Dahlia, went missing, and she she ended up being found dissected um, or bisected, drained of her blood, smiley face carved in her mouth. Everybody knows the story. I'm not going to get into it too much. But Cameron links this murder to a 13-year-old Eddie Edwards. He does this because he believes the psych eval that Eddie Edwards had from his juvenile days showed that he had a propensity for violence. And he kept going back to that. So what? That's not evidence. Because somebody has a propensity for violence. When I was in my 20s, I bet you if I took a psyche eval, they'd probably say that I had a propensity to violence. Because I like to fight a lot. Okay? Doesn't mean I'm the Black Dahlia murderer, does it? I need a drink. So, he says that Elizabeth Short was in Chicago 
weeks previous to her murder. That is where a 13-year-old Eddie Edwards meets her after he killed a 6-year-old girl named Deegan. I think this is called the Lipstick Murders. That gets into Steve Hodell's book, and I don't even want to get into him either. But apparently, the six-year-old girl was killed. He says Elizabeth Short was an aspiring writer. She was there covering that. Edwards latched on to her. She dissed him somehow. At age 13, he is. She goes to L.A. 13-year-old Eddie Edwards follows her to L.A. because of this diss, murders her, and places her at the intersection of Norton and Deegan. I just want to sit here in silence for a little bit, I think. To try to take in the level of rabbit holing and evidence fixing that's going on here. You can link just about anything, anybody, to any crime if you try hard enough. Okay? Let's see. When Lacey Peterson... Let's say O.J. Simpson. I'm surprised he didn't say O.J. killed Nicole. Or that Eddie Edwards killed Nicole Simpson. Let's say, O.J., that happened in 1995. Nicole Simpson frequented a bar in Brentwood. And in 1995, I was in the Marine Corps. I got sent on a uh, training to Camp Pendleton in California. And why we had a three-day leave out there, I went to the same bar that Nicole Brown Simpson went to. Now, because of my propensity for violence, because I like to fight, and I like to have a few Budweiser's and a shot of Jameson, I hit on Nicole Brown Simpson at the bar and she, as she should, turned me down. So I went and I murdered her. So you could make that leap because I was out there. No, this is all hypothetical, okay? I'm just trying to illustrate how you could connect people to something they have absolutely nothing to do with. Maybe that was a bad example. But you get what I'm trying to say. It's like the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. You can connect anything. Look at the Zodiac ciphers. Look at all the theories of who did it. Okay, you look at Arthur Lee Allen, Ross Sullivan, Lawrence Kane. Earl Best. And these are the ones I'm just thinking off the top of my, my head. Bruce Davis. There's so many more. You can insert something of them, their background, to that cipher and make it work. It's making it fit your narrative. Listen, if the evidence doesn't fit, move on. Don't force it into that square peg when it doesn't fit. Sometimes you have to step back, look in a mirror, and say, wait a second. This sounds ridiculous. <sighs> episode six, the final episode. 
I have here, if the evidence pointed elsewhere, he would make excuses as to why it doesn't fit. And I believe that. It ended up in Portland, Oregon with the murders of a Lover Lane of a Peyton and an Allen that were killed. Two people were arrested for this murder years later. Uh, their names were Brom and two Jurgison brothers. He believes, this is Cameron, that Eddie Edwards committed these crimes. Now, I will give him some credit on this. Edwards was found at the scene of the crime. He had a bullet wound to his arm. They had bring him in for questioning, and then he had somebody call to pretend to be a probation officer to get him released. He ended up on the 10 most wanted list. I'd have to follow up more on that, but if he was found at the scene of this crime and was taken in, that would raise some red flags to me, because remember, earlier, his daughter had said that he had taken them back to a scene of a crime. And when she turned him in years later, uh, she had brought that up. So he had the proclivity to go back to these crime scenes. So there's some stock into that. Um, the crime scene of this Lover's Lane, Paint and Allen thing, there was the the... The male victim was stabbed to death and beaten. The female was found miles away. Um, I'm not sure if she was raped or how she died, but she was murdered as well. The two, three people that they arrested, they had a witness that said, hey, these three people were at a party in that location. We went to get more beer. We passed the lovers, the victims, stopped in and seen them on the way back, invited them to the party. On the way back to the party, we raced in a car. The victim kind of pushed the suspect off the road, making him mad, went back, ended up killing him. So there was an eyewitness. Now, what is odd about this is that they were convicted, two of them, one was acquitted, and the guy was sentenced to life in prison, but he got out after three years. So they made a big deal about this in that documentary, stating that he was innocent. I don't know whether he was innocent or guilty. I didn't research it enough, but I think I'm going to. I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do a video on every one of these murders, not to discredit John Cameron, because to be honest with you, I, I don't care what he thinks. You know, he has his own opinions. Uh, he can do whatever he, whatever he wants. But I'm interested now, you know, uh, especially if somebody is innocent and they were convicted. Because on this one, Edwards seems to be a viable suspect. But see how this is a non-famous like famous case where he is potentially a suspect the same with the ones that he confessed to they were not famous cases and he confessed to them um, it seems to me that Cameron is making that leap so my question is why is he doing this you know does he really believe what he's saying or is there an ulterior motive like a TV show or a book because like I said you know hey I wrote a screenplay about that 10 years ago it was fiction of course but I thought it was intriguing what if one person was involved in all of these famous homicides I wonder if Cameron got the idea from no, I'm just kidding. Even though that book, I believe, is for sale on Amazon and has been for a long time. Hopefully, he didn't get that and uh, turn it in my my fiction work to nonfiction. Because really, 
I mean, you, you, you can, man, you can make somebody fit anything you want. You really can. All right, let me see what I have written down here to that. He was saying how in this last Lover's Lane, this Paint and Island murder, the victims, the male victim's gun, he kept the 22 under the seat, and there was a bullet hole from inside the car to the outside, and it was Cameron's belief that the male victim shot Cameron, and that would account for the bullet grazing his arm when the police picked him up and took him in for questioning. Um, that weapon was never recovered, according to Cameron. And he makes the leap that, well, a twenty two was used in the first Zodiac murders, and he believes it was this very gun that he had stole from the male victim. I would, I would re, retort with... A 22 caliber gun is a very, very common gun. To make that leap, that it, first of all, to make the leap that Eddie Edwards is the Zodiac, but then that he's the Zodiac and he stole this male victim's 22, and that is the gun that was used to kill the Zodiac's first victims. I have written down here, they made that case, the Peyton and Allen case, the last case on the show to try to bring credibility to the other nonsense. Um, so I just want to go back to the beginning here with Martha Moxley. Cameron says that this murder was done to get back at the Kennedys. Bullshit. Chandra Levy. He mailed the anthrax letters. West Memphis 3. He, he shows a... a picture, a still from the video of the Byerses when they're at their little son's grave of this old man walking by and Joe Berlinger, the producer or the cameraman, whoever, photographed this old man walking by, videotaped him. Cameron says that that is Eddie Edwards. Whew. He says that the Paradise Lost documentary is related to the Zodiac murders because there's a cross symbol on the description of that show and because it says Paradise is, is in the title it just like Paradise was in one of the Zodiac cards that they that he had sent John Bonet, Black Dahlia, Adam Walsh Zodiac, Lacey Peterson, Jimmy freaking Hoffa, Stephen Avery, Sam Shepard, Atlanta Child Murders. I don't know what else to say about this. The documentary itself, I thought, was done as well as it could. I would have put a disclaimer on it that it is strictly... For entertainment purposes. And no individuals were harmed during this filming. Because. <laughs> it is the most. And listen folks. I tried. I spent money. On that. To watch it. To try to get. This individual's. Theories. To resonate with me. That maybe. It's possible. I saw nothing. There's zero evidence that Eddie Edwards was the murderer of any of those cases. Not even involved. I saw nothing. There's no evidence. 
And this guy kept saying, you have to follow the evidence. Well, buddy, you need to look in the mirror and, and follow your own advice. I understand why ex-cops, cops, victims, family members have a grudge against him. And I felt sorry for him because I feel that way sometimes. Certainly not to that degree. Because I don't think I spout crazy theories. Yes, people are going to look at you as a crackpot. If you were to bring forth credible evidence, then I think maybe you would get more better reception from law enforcement or victims' families. I just don't know whether to feel sorry. I, I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how I feel about him personally. I, I don't want to ridicule him. I really don't. I don't like ridiculing anybody because it hurts their feelings. And I know what that's like. You know, when I was looking into the Sherry Joe Bates murder, the Zodiac case, I got two emails from two of the detectives. The second one, I responded to back essentially saying, listen, you talk to me with disrespect and disrespect is what you're going to get back. Okay? You come at me man to man and talk man to man, cop to cop, brother to brother, then I'll explain things and then we can work things out. Till then, go fuck yourself. To his credit, we did work it out because then he did come back to me man to man and talk to me respectful. The first detective, no, that never happened and I don't see it happening. But I didn't it, it made me feel bad. Okay? So I don't want to make this guy feel bad, especially like if he's watching this. I don't want to be one of those haters. So I don't want to say anything negative about him personally because I don't know him. But just like George Hodel, who wrote the Black Dahlia book, he wrote a blog saying that me and I knew Steve kinda we had shared some emails together he was a member of ASOC um, he had actually sent me a couple books that he signed a long time ago but then he criticized my saying that he watched the hunt for the Zodiac Killer and it was a piece of crap and that the two detectives, me and Sal, obviously did not know what we were doing. And I resented that. So I'm sitting here trying to think, how does that make what I am doing in this video different than what he did to me? He criticized me by saying I didn't know what I was doing and that the show was shit. So am I not doing that exact same thing to the James Cameron in this show? I don't want to because I'm trying to correlate about how it made me feel. That's why I don't want to say he, he doesn't know what he's doing. I guess I, I, there's no other way around it. I guess it, it's my opinion that he's wrong. And that's basically all I can say. I don't know him as a person. I don't know whether he's crazy. I don't know anything about the guy other than his background, and I don't even know much about that. But I guess is any, like, I listen to talk shows like football, 
and sports stuff all the time. And it's like it's their job, these announcers, to talk about these athletes and whether they're a good football player or not, whether they should be starting. So they're giving their opinions. And it must make those football players feel bad when somebody says he shouldn't be starting. He's a has-been. So does that justify me talking about this detective and saying that I don't believe at all in his investigation? It's a fine line. It really is now that I'm sitting here thinking about it. Because you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But there's no other way around it. You know, I don't believe in it at all. And my fans, my subscribers, which is at like 25,000 right now, want to know my opinion. So I'm giving it. Now, if James Cameron watched this and he contacted me and he was upset with what I said, I guess I, I can understand it because I was in his shoes. So I guess there's no there's no easy way to do it. I I disagree with him wholeheartedly. Except for the one, you know, maybe the Lovers Lane one, there seemed to be uh maybe some merit on that even though two three other people were arrested and convicted. Well, two of them were convicted. Um I want to look into that a little bit further. <sighs> But it just gets it gets so frustrating. This this did, and uh, maybe it's just I'm being the voice of reason. And when sometimes in true crime there isn't a voice of reason, people go down rabbit holes all the time. Not every murder is committed by a serial killer. Sometimes it's exactly as it seems. Sometimes not. You can't make everything fit your narrative. That's that's the whole thing. I mean, you can. It's your opinion. You do whatever you want. But if you want people to take you seriously and have credibility, you can't. And I think that's why nobody takes this guy seriously. Because there's there's no credibility there. There's no there's no evidence. He didn't kill Lacey Peterson. He didn't kill Martha Moxley. He didn't kill Stevie Branch. Or Byers. Or Hobbs. Just trying trying to think if I had all three of those victims' name right. I don't think I did. Hobbs was the parent's name. That wasn't the kid's name. Uh, just so frustrated, so I'm sorry. He... Does, does his theories hurt people? That's the big thing. Because if it does, then that's... That's not right. So it's like I just want to sit here and, and talk to you guys like across the table from me. Like we're sitting here drinking coffee or drinking a beer. Well, I mean, what do you think? Okay, I mean, do you really believe that this one guy... Just because somebody is maybe in the same area code or zip code of a victim, does that mean that he committed that crime? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You look at Eddie Edwards and what his M.O. is, okay? He killed his stepson for the insurance money. He killed these other people where it appeared to be somewhat of a robbery, even 
Cameron admitted that he thinks that he stole one of the guy's watches and he sees him wearing it. So is it the Zodiac's murders robbery? No. Was Zodiac a con man? No. Was Lacey Peterson killed in a robbery? No. Was the West Memphis Three case, were those three little boys killed because of a robbery or a con? No. But then he wants to say he, Eddie Edwards killed because of his hatred of his mother. So he started killing people, brunettes, that look like his mom. Well, see, now you're changing the M.O. to fit other murders. Well, he killed Lacey Peterson because it reminded of his mom. He killed the Black Dahlia because it reminded of his mom. Just like Ken Krantz said on that. You can't have it both ways, John. I would have to... I would have to question anybody's intelligence and credibility if they believed John Cameron's theories on those quote unquote famous murderers and Eddie Edwards involvement. My comments always blow up. Most of them, 90%, are intelligent, rational thoughts, conjecture, and opinions. And I welcome them. I have 10% that are crazy. Well, let's go 9% that are crazy, 1% that are trolls. And they just want to spew negativity. I welcome the comments because it makes me think. I am sure I'm going to get a lot of comments on this. But please, if you're going to comment that Eddie Edwards was involved in the West Memphis Three... Lacey Peterson, Martha Moxley, Sam Shepard, Atlanta Child Murders, Jimmy Hoffa, Zodiac. Back it up with evidence. Not, not far-fetched or insignificant clues. Don't comment. Eddie Edwards is responsible for the Atlanta child murders because in 1981 he was in Atlanta. That doesn't cut it. That doesn't cut it. Okay? <sighs> Wayne Williams is absolutely responsible for the Atlanta child murders. Maybe not every single one of them. But Eddie Edwards is not changing his modus operandi to kill kids because he is a racist. You see how they change? Everything changes to fit their narrative. He's killing brunettes because it reminds me of his mom. That explains Lacey Peterson, Black Dahlia. He is killing uh, people at Lover's Lane because that's what Zodiac did. He's killing Atlanta child murderers. He's killing all these black kids because he's racist. You're just, you're changing it to fit your narrative. I don't know how many times I'm saying it. And I'm sorry. I know you're getting sick of hearing me. Here it's an hour in... Um, it's just ludicrous. I'm glad that he has the balls to present his theories and try to back it up with evidence. Knowing he's going to get ridiculed. 
That takes some balls. It really does. Doesn't make him right. I don't know what else to say. This is the first case, I think, that really had me shaking my head so much and going like this and being so frustrated that I've ever done. And to be honest, I think I wasted my money watching it. There have been worse documentaries at Nexium when HBO was by far worse than this. This kept me attentive, but everything was just so far fetched. I hoped, yeah, I would hope that some of it was just television oriented and they were trying to make good television to the mindless masses that are watching it and some of them, unfortunately, that believe it. Okay, I'm done. I'm done talking about it. So, subscription numbers have gone up. I just went over 25,000. I got five episodes, I think, ready to go. Got to get them out to you guys. I'm trying to space them out. I'm still going to try every Wednesday to do member-only chats. I think our, our members are up. Also, very, very good amount. A, by good amount, I mean a manageable amount because I want to respond to members. I think it's important. One, but somebody quoted, imagine that Ken's being or as a YouTuber or something being nice to their subscribers. Number one, I'm not a YouTuber. But, yes, I'm going to be nice to my subscribers. They deserve it. And listen, I remember when I was a nobody. I said, whatever, I still am kind of. But when I was sort of getting into true crime and stuff, I reached out to a lot of famous people to try to educate myself and learn and go to conferences and, and stuff and there were a couple that did not treat me very well. And as I said before, I don't forgive and I don't forget. Okay? And I harbor resentment towards those people. And I always said that if I ever make it up here, I will never treat my fans that way. And I don't. I try to correspond or get back to everybody. And I feel that that's important to and I will do that without a shadow of a doubt. So if I don't get back to you, just know I get a lot. There's a lot coming in. I got a lot going on. But I make every effort to respond, especially to any elite members. Uh, I will respond to you. So I would say, hey, like, share, subscribe. Because that's what all those YouTubers say, right? But as usual, I don't give a damn whether you do or don't. It's nice getting those subscription numbers steadily increasing. You know, a thousand a week. But I'm hoping it's because of my content. And not because I'm saying like, share, subscribe, whatever it is. I'm not going to beg for your subscriptions. Either you like it or you don't. If you like it, hey, I'm here with you. And I'm going to keep putting this stuff out. And we're going to keep learning together. We're going to educate each other. And if you don't like it, hit the road, Jack. Don't come to this channel. It's as simple as that. I find it totally amazing that people will watch a video, not like it, and then take the time to tell me that they don't like it and the reasons why really you got enough time in your day to to do that if I don't like a channel or I, I'm watching television I turn it 
I don't write NBC and say, hey, I don't like The Bachelorette because of this, this, and this. I don't like Big Brother because this, this, and this. I just don't watch it. I don't have enough time in my day to put out my negativity to you. You people amaze me. But again, that's like 1%, 2% of people. 98% love it. And I that's who I'm here for is you guys. So thanks for all the support. We're moving forward. And I got a bunch of cases to do, including some off of this. You know, those Lover Lane's cases I want to look at. But make no mistake about it. Eddie Edwards was not the Zodiac. He was not the West Memphis Three murderers. He was not Martha Moxley's murderer. He was not the Atlanta child killer. My opinion only. So there you have it. If you haven't watched the documentary, do yourself a favor. Don't do it. See, I should just change it up. Usually I say, go and watch it. If it's free, go and watch it. Don't spend the money on Amazon or anywhere else to, to watch it. It's not worth it. Okay? It's my opinion only. So, until next time, mains out. Yes.